Hello and welcome to Medicine in 5 Minutes. My name is Dr. Moses Kazevu. This is a series on my YouTube channel where we look at medical topics in the shortest space of time. For this medical episode, let us set the scene before we begin to discuss the topic. Suppose you have a roommate, John, and on one day you come back home and you find out that he is actually unconscious and you decide that he has organophosphate poisoning. Remember that organophosphates are pretty much used worldwide as insecticides and they are going to be working in the human body by inhibiting acetylcholinesterase, which is an enzyme that breaks down acetylcholine and this is going to result in an accumulation of acetylcholine at both central as well as peripheral nerve endings. Remember that these cholinergic receptors are both muscarinic receptors M1 through M5 as well as nicotinic receptors NN as well as NM receptors on various organs and these are going to be stimulated bringing about the characteristic features of the condition. Some general features include anxiety, restlessness, tiredness and even some headaches. You may also get muscarinic features such as vomiting, nausea, abdominal colic, diarrhea, tenesmus, sweating, hypersalivation, you may get some chest tightness, you may get some bronchial secretions, you may even get meiosis. Then nicotinic features include muscle fasciculations, there may be flaccid paralysis of the limb muscles, the respiratory muscles, and even the extraocular muscles. You may also get weakness of the muscles innervated by some of the cranial nerves. So you actually decide that John is actually feeling too sick and you actually decide to call an ambulance and an ambulance comes by, he has to be resuscitated along the way, but he's eventually rushed to the hospital. So at the hospital, the doctor that decides to attend to John orders for some investigations. So investigations that you may do in the patients that have organophosphate poisoning include erythrocyte cholinesterase activity. So this may be decreased to about 30 to 50% in asymptomatic patients, 10 to 20% in moderate patients, and the activity may be less than 10% in severely poisoned patients. You may also want to do a plasma cholinesterase activity, which is of course less specific, but also it may be decreased. Other investigations include a full blood count or a complete blood count. You may do urea and electrolytes to pick up any derangements. You may also want to order your stool microscopy culture and sensitivity to rule out gastroenteritis. In the management of the condition, you want to do your ABC, so you want to check that the airway is patent, suction and secretions, nurse this patient upright if they are unconscious. You also want to administer oxygen and ensure that the patient is breathing, gain venous access, draw blood for investigations, and start running your fluids. You want to remove any soiled clothes or any contamination that may be there from the organophosphate. You may actually wash the patients or decontaminate the patients. So the drugs that you're going to be given, you want to give atropine 2 milligrams IV every 5 to 10 minutes until of course there are signs of atropinization where the skin becomes flushed and dry, the pupils begin to dilate and the heart rate begins to increase. You may also want to give polydoxime chloride 30 milligrams per kg by a slow IV infusion followed by a polydoxime mesylate about 8 to 10 milligrams per kg per hour and that is how we manage organophosphate poisoning. Thank you for taking your time to listen to this episode on medicine in five minutes. Subscribe if you haven't, drop a like and drop a comment. Until next time, my name is Dr. Moses Kasevu. Bye-bye.